Usually if you buy a discounted veteran in Dynasty, it is because people expect them to get worse over the coming seasons. Like maybe, yes, they can be productive this next year, but in 2024, they're going to be a little bit worse. 2025, they're going to continue to decline. We'll actually have some discounted veterans here that I think are going to help you win this season and may actually see their situations improve going into 2024. So let's dive into some buy low wide receivers First guy, not a veteran at all, though. First guy, we're actually going to go rookie with Quentin Johnston. If you're looking at Quentin Johnston, I understand we've already talked about this man for way too long, right? I mean, we've been looking at these rookies in Dynasty since November, December, January this past year. And if you are looking at Quentin Johnston, this was a wide receiver that checked almost every single box that you were looking for, right? I mean, we know that he breaks out as a true freshman. You love to see it. He dominates as a sophomore. You love to see it. He declares as a junior. You love to see it. Then he goes to the NFL draft and actually is selected in round one. For this reason, Quentin Johnston scored very well in our wide receiver model. Now, he didn't do the same thing such as Jackson Smith and Jigba, where he was going up against elite competition at TCU. No, I mean, the competition there wasn't that great. So it's not like he is just 100% guaranteed to hit at the NFL level. If you put him into our wide receiver prospect model, you'll see that, yeah, he has some very strong players to be compared to. I mean, you're looking at guys like Mike Evans, C.D. Lamb, Odell Beckham Jr., Debo Samuel, Michael Thomas, Allen Robinson, all in the same range. But you do have some bust on this list, right? I mean, Corey Coleman checked a lot of boxes. Corey Coleman was pretty damn bad. Jalen Rager checked a lot of boxes. I mean, hell, same school, but was pretty damn bad. So I can't sit here and say Quentin Johnston is 100% going to work out this next season. But what I can say is he has a prospect profile where he has a very high ceiling in his range of outcomes. So it really just comes down to the price that you're paying, right? Like it's hard to overpay for one of those truly elite level players, such as like Jamar Chase going into the NFL, right? But with Quentin Johnston, I'm very comfortable with the price that he's at right now, specifically in Dynasty Leagues. Right now, Quentin Johnston is the wide receiver 22. He's actually fallen down these rankings quite a bit. Right now, he's going directly after DJ Moore. He's going directly after Brandon Ayuk, as well as Quentin Johnston. I would much prefer Quentin Johnston over DJ Moore. I would much prefer Quentin Johnston over over Brandon Ayuk. And I think I would probably say the same thing about the running backs that are in this range of startup drafts. Now, I think the reason why you're actually getting a discount on Quentin Johnston, why you've seen him fall in dynasty rankings and why you've seen him fall across the board as of late is people are really focusing in on 2023, right? Like right now, if I'm going to go ahead and pull up underdog ADP, you'll see that people aren't too excited about Quentin Johnson. Keep in mind, underdog drafts, obviously best ball just for 2023, but it gives us a good sense of what people's expectations are coming into this next season. And coming into this next season, Johnson's going much later than someone like Jordan Addison, right? I mean, for example, Addison scores a 32 in our wide receiver prospect model, like not as good as Johnston, and if you're in a redraft league, you probably prefer someone like Jordan Addison while you still have Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, and Austin Eckler all with the Los Angeles Chargers. For this reason, in these underdog drafts, Quentin Johnston is going as the wide receiver 42. He's going directly after Gabe Davis, Jahan Dotson, George Pickens, Kadarius Toney, Jordan Addison's all the way up at wide receiver 37. But we can't just draft as if it's underdog and we're only thinking about 2023. You also have to think about how the situation will change going into 2024. Because if we pull up three contracts that are extremely important to look at, the top three receiving options in Los Angeles are Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler, Mike Williams, whatever order you want to look at. And all three of these guys are pretty damn old. I mean, you had Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, both drafted in 2017. Both guys stayed all four years in college. So, I mean, right now, they're getting up there. I mean, right now, if you're going to go ahead and look at Mike Williams, Mike Williams in 2024 will be going into his age 30 season. Now, what's more important than his age is the contract situation. Mike Williams will have $32 million owed to him in his age 30 season in 2024. Only $12 million of that is guaranteed. So if Mike Williams were to disappoint this next year, you could possibly look at the Los Angeles Chargers saving $20 million for moving on from Mike Williams. And that may be something they have to do given the Justin Herbert contract. 
Now, if you're going to go over to Keenan Allen, Keenan Allen in 2024 will be going into his age 32 season. Keenan Allen will be owed $34 million, 11 of which will be guaranteed. So they could save $23 million for moving on from a 32-year-old Keenan Allen with the Justin Herbert contract extension coming up. Maybe they're going to have to do that. If you go over to Austin Eckler, we know Eckler demanded a trade earlier this offseason because he is not under contract in 2024. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to decide to move on from Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler. Hell, it's entirely possible that they restructure some of these contracts before this season even starts. But what I do think is highly likely is at least one of these players will be gone this next year and possibly two. And what happens if you say two of these guys are gone or at minimum just one and then all of a sudden Quentin Johnston has a very real shot to be the wide receiver one in Los Angeles with Justin Herbert leading the helm. This is a player that can skyrocket up rankings. So just because maybe you want to push him down in your underdog drafts right now, it doesn't mean you should be devaluing him in Dynasty because 2024 is going to be the year of Quentin Johnston. But of course, real quick side note, if you want to get in a 2023 draft, y'all know we're drafting literally every single day on Underdog Fantasy. We're streaming it. I mean, we're going to draft over 700 teams this year. We drafted over 700 teams last year. Best ball, no time commitment at all during the season. I won $150,000 on Underdog last season. And if you want to get in a draft with us, of course, you can go sign up with promo code FLOCK. They'll match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to 100. Plus, you'll get my 2023 Dynasty Fantasy Football Rankings and a free trial to flogfantasy.com with the link in the description and comment section. Let's go over to some veterans now, right? Let's look at a wide receiver that people just want nothing to do with in Debo Samuel. Now, I understand, yes, Debo Samuel is a wide receiver that I've never really carried water for. Like, if you go back to what we were talking about with Debo Samuel at the beginning of the offseason, I was like, yeah, it's just not too exciting, right? I mean, he's an older guy. The man's 27 years old. I mean, he's coming off a wide receiver three season. Don't really feel like he's a cornerstone asset to build around in Dynasty. And a lot of other people kind of felt the same. And a lot of people ran to the rooftops and started screaming, sell Debo Samuel, sell Debo Samuel. And if you're looking at what's happened over the past six months, Debo Samuel back in January was the wide receiver 16 on keep trade cut. Right now, Debo Samuel's the wide receiver 30. What has changed from January to now? Nothing. Nothing at all. It's not like the 49ers went out there and drafted a wide receiver. It's not like the 49ers came out and said, yeah, Debo Samuel is injured. No, nothing's changed. So yes, maybe he was a little bit overvalued when he was a high-end wide receiver two in Dynasty, but now that you're getting him down at the wide receiver 30 price tag, and if you remember going into last season in August, Debo Samuel was the wide receiver five in Dynasty. This is just a great situation to buy the dip. If you're looking at some of the other players in the same range, George Pickens, Jamison Williams are going ahead of Debo Samuel. Zay Flowers is also right there neck and neck with them. I would trade any of those wide receivers to go grab Devo, if I'm going to be honest with you. Now, there are a couple positives, a couple negatives, right? First negative I want to point out will be the split that you had this past season with and without Christian McCaffrey. With Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel averaged 3.9 receptions per game. Debo Samuel averaged 7 targets per game and 38 receiving yards. Now, without Christian McCaffrey, that mark was up at 65 receiving yards per game. He was up there at five receptions per game, almost eight targets a game. The usage clearly is not great with CMC. Like Debo Samuel would be significantly more exciting if they did not have essentially his clone at the running back position in Christian McCaffrey, of course. So that's the first negative. The second negative is you can just look at his downfall from 2021, where he was the wide receiver three from a points per game perspective to this past season. You can see 3.1 to 1.8 yards per route run you can see the man goes from 110 total yards per game down to 66 so there's some very strong negatives and why no he should no longer be a top five wide receiver in dynasty as he was last offseason of course everybody understands that but one we can say with the positive is the man's still in the prime of his career two we can say as a positive the man possibly has the best quarterback in the nfl on his depth chart in trey lance and three what we can say as a positive 
is the Brandon Ayuk contract situation. With the Brandon Ayuk contract situation, you could possibly see the 49ers look to move Ayuk. I mean, there were a lot of rumors about this around the NFL draft. While I do think that's unlikely, I think if that's a 5 to 10% shot that they don't want to actually extend Brandon Ayuk to a long-term deal, that that could open up the window for Debo Samuel to see that expanded role as the wide receiver one yet again in San Francisco. I'm not saying Debo Samuel should be valued ahead of Brandon Ayuk. Like I said, I mean, I think that it's understandable on why Debo Samuel's fallen in dynasty rankings. But now you have Ayuk up there as the wide receiver 20, Debo Samuel as the wide receiver 30. I think it honestly should be a little bit of a closer mark. Now, going over to our next wide receiver, going to be looking at Chris Godwin. Now, Godwin, another aging wide receiver. Yes, this man was drafted in 2017. Going to be in his age 27 season here. So you're not expecting Chris Godwin to improve as a talent, right? I don't think anybody's sitting here saying Godwin's going to continuously get better at the position. But right now, he's being drafted as a low-end wide receiver three, high-end wide receiver four. Being drafted as the wide receiver 33 according to keep trade cut. Now, of course, if you're going to go over to underdog is going to go higher than this. His underdog expectation this next season has Chris Godwin currently sitting as the wide receiver 29. So still just a mid wide receiver three. And it's understandable with the departure of Tom Brady with the addition of Baker Mayfield that this overall passing offense should be much worse this next season. But nonetheless, as a wide receiver three, Chris Godwin can still help out your dynasty team if you have a deeper starting line of requirements. Now, what I also want to look at is the potential for Chris Godwin to actually be in a much better situation in 2024 compared to what he will be in this season. Because if we go over and look at Godwin, Mike Evans is a wide receiver that I have loved. I'm considering ordering a Mike Evans jersey, right? But he may not be on this team in 2024. Mike Evans has just played through a very lengthy contract. He's made a lot of money. And we don't really know what the long-term situation will be. In 2024, Mike Evans will be going to his age 31 season. I know it seems like Evans will forever be a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, right? Because, I mean, the man was drafted there in 2014. He's just been dominant. I mean, I would say he's probably been the face of that franchise for a very long time if we don't include Brady. But there's a non-0% chance that this is Mike Evans' last season with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. There's a non-0% chance that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers get a top three draft pick this next year where they're able to get a significant quarterback upgrade over who they have right now with Baker Mayfield. So if you have possibly the departure of Mike Evans in 2024 plus a quarterback upgrade, Godwin may go from being a wide receiver three right now to actually being a wide receiver two in 2024 and then maybe even 2025. I mean, the man's still young. He's 27 years old, right? He's three years younger than Mike Evans. And if I'm able to get him at like a low end wide receiver three price tag in dynasty slash high end wide receiver four price tag in dynasty, I really like that mark. Now going over to someone that is much cheaper in dynasty than he is on underdog. We're going to go ahead and look at Elijah Moore. I mean, if you want a discount on Elijah Moore, it's not happening on underdog, right? I mean, Elijah Moore going as, I mean, only the wide receiver 44, but still this is right in the same range as David Montgomery, Rashad White. I mean, Elijah Moore is being drafted ahead of James Conner on underdog. I thought back when he was in the fifties, yes, I was very interested in Elijah Moore. We called him a must draft wide receiver, but now I honestly don't think we're going to be drafting him on the underdog for 2024. But in dynasty, however, this is actually a very interesting situation because Elijah Moore is being drafted about the same mark. And I would make the argument that Elijah Moore is significantly more appealing in the long term than he is just this next season. Because if we're looking at the long term here with the Cleveland Browns, keep in mind, this is a Browns team that gave up so many resources, both in the form of guaranteed money, as well as draft picks to go get Deshaun Watson, that this is not going to be a team that can easily go through and bolster their wide receiver depth chart for years to come. Honestly, I feel like they got Elijah Moore, a very useful piece for this offense at a strong value that they really needed. And if you're looking at the Amari Cooper contract situation, I, I know we keep on bringing up these contracts, but nonetheless, I mean, Amari in 2024 is going to be owed $20 million, 11 of which is guaranteed. He'll be 30 years old, and maybe you can assume Amari Cooper is there in 2024, right? But at this point of his career, I think it's safe to say that Amari Cooper is going to be on the decline. And even if he is there in 2024, it gives the ability for Elijah Moore to possibly be the wide receiver one in a Deshaun Watson-led offense this next season. With Elijah Moore, we know at the very end of his rookie year, he was a top 10 wide receiver from a points per game perspective. We know with Elijah Moore, he was a very strong prospect coming out of Ole Miss. 
And we also know with Elijah Moore that he's had great news coming out of OTAs. So I don't know. I, I think it's a very interesting mark for a couple of these veterans, right? Where you can say, yeah, they'll be useful this season, but there's an outside chance that given the contract situation on their own roster, that they may actually be in a better situation in 2024. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to try to make some of those plays. But I think that's all I have for you. Again, thank you so much for being a member of the flock and supporting the channel. If you have not done so already, go down there, drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you play Dynasty Fantasy Football. And of course, if you want to get into draft with us, we're drafting literally every single day on Underdog Fantasy. Check out all these player props there. Plus, you can get into a draft with us. And if you sign up with promo code flock, they're going to match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to hundred. You'll get my 2023 dynasty fantasy football rankings. Plus you'll get a free trial to FlockFantasy.com with the link in the comment section and description. But thank you ladies and gentlemen, really do appreciate you and really hope we get to see you in the live stream later today.